The Casting Sight series continues with cast voices. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash markscott. The Veopreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original everyday Veopreneur. Hello, and welcome to the Everyday Veopreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original everyday Veopreneur, and you know what the mission of this podcast is. I want to give you actionable, practical advice every single week, things that you can use to help you grow your voiceover business. And that's what this Casting Site series is all about. It's about giving you advice that you can use to help you grow your voiceover business by deciding, is this casting site the right one for me to invest in or is it not? Am I going to get a return on my investment or will I not? And just getting a better sense of some of the different options that are out there for you to make money in voiceover. You know, a lot of voice actors think that I am like the anti-casting site guy, and, and I've never been the anti-casting site guy. But are all casting sites created equal? Absolutely not. And that is what this series is all about, shining a light on some of the better options that are out there for you as a VOpreneur to add them to your toolbox as a tool. One more way that you can try and generate some revenue for your business. Now, this week on the podcast, I'm interviewing the newest casting site on the block. When it comes to the world of online casting, there's no shortage of sites out there to choose from. And in this Everyday Veopreneur casting site series, I'm highlighting a few of them to help you make more informed decisions about where you're going to invest your dollars for membership. So the new kid on the block is a site that was founded by someone who's no stranger to the world of voiceover casting. For 29 years, she worked as the founder and owner of the Tag Talent Agency, a boutique agency consistently in the top 1% of all agencies on IMDb with thousands of major principal bookings in film, TV, and voiceover. She is also the founder of Cast Voices. Welcome to the show, Liz Atherton. Oh my gosh, what a great introduction. Thank you, Mark. You have a lovely voice, by the way. You should do voiceover. Just saying. I should. <laughs> I'm, I might give it a try. <laughs> oh, my God. You're great. So first things first, I got to know, how does somebody end up with a dog named Fish? <laughs> well, his full name is Fisher Cutbait. I mean, you know, so I I just don't know. And he is my companion, to say the least. He's 18 years old, and we just hang, you know. He's not a cuddle bunny. We're just, He's just, he's around, and I'm around, and we check on each other. But <laughs> I had two dogs and my Gidget, Gidget Gracie Grasshopper, lived till she was 21. So whatever they're doing here, they're living at large. Um, anyway, I love him. Thank you for asking. Oh, oh, just a quick note. He just got shortlisted for this pet contest. I sent a picture in, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, thank you. So the casting never stops is what you're telling me. <laughs> I guess not. Not, you know, when you got that eye and then intuition is just on. What can I say? I understand. So give us kind of the Coles Notes version of Liz Atherton. How does one go from voiceover agent with a very successful career, obviously highly respected in the industry, to casting site owner? What, what, what was that journey like? What a great question again. Um, and thank you for asking. And in all fairness, the success of my agency was because of the incredible talent that we represented and the incredible agents that worked with me. I do want to give credit where credit's due. Um, way back in the day, before I really jumped into the voiceover and on-camera agent business, I was a project manager for a Fortune 10 company. And uh, I, in that time, also was the silent partner in an agency. And I got there with my kids, when my two oldest boys were just cute as a button. Anyway, 
quickly that agency went up for sale and, and we bought it. And then as fate and timing would have it, I left corporate America and took over then Chow Agency. But I always had a bent toward productivity improvement. And I still had a lot of friends in technology. So we created the first ever talent agency website. I mean, there may be one or two ahead of me, but we were right in there. And then uh, I really had this penchant for making it where the actors could go update their own resumes. And that we implemented. We would first do that. And then I got licensed in California while I was resident in Texas. And that was a first and, and did all that. And then I finally, you know, the agency piece was just humming and chumming thanks to the dudes that worked with me. And I said, hey, do y'all guys want that? Because I really wanted to go create this platform. I mean, I reserved casting.com in 1995. Lost it over time. And it just seemed like a natural, natural bent. Um, plus... My killer son, who is a movie star in his own right, is a self-taught senior stack developer like nobody's business. So he really understood the acting business um, and how to make and get connected. And we wanted it fair and even across platforms. You know, you, your your resume shows up at the same time everybody else's does. So um, it just kind of evolved that way. And I really love my work. Which is so important. And I guess it, it certainly helps to have a family member who knows how to help build some of these things out. That certainly certainly makes things a little bit more fun when you get to work with family. Although sometimes I suppose it can maybe make it a little more stressful too. <laughs> well, in all fairness, I respect my kid. His name is Nick Krause, like nobody's business. I mean, he was just born this even temper, brilliant human being. I mean, he went to college at 10 and then he was in movies and He's so humble and so gracious and so frigging brilliant. I mean, I say that whether I'm his mom or not. Mm -hmm. We don't ever really even say that, but I got lucky. And and he got lucky and he, be, he you know, got no an Academy Award winning film, a starring role. I mean, he just, and he gets it. So I'm very, very lucky. And then we had some investors come along, Bobby and Elizabeth Alcott, who are amazing human beings. And also familiar with the business and the marketing side of things. And Jen Greenfield has joined us recently to kind of help us with our um, new business development, which is just fancy words for bringing on casting directors. Um, so I've been really lucky, Mark, um, you know, to be this kind of late in the career game doing exactly what I want to do. It's hard as hell, and I'm sorry for cussing, but it is the most challenging thing I've ever taken on. I mean, it beats birth and babies. So, um, but, but I love it. Well, which brings me to the next question that I was going to ask, because you've been around the game for a while. You've seen casting sites come and go. You see how many new casting sites every year. There's, you know, five more that pop up and, and six months later they're gone. Why in the world take on the monumental task of trying, <laughs> trying to start another one? Like, what were you thinking? I don't know. Tenacity, tenacity. I just knew we could build a better mousetrap. I just knew we could. And Nick, God bless him, he's jumped in this journey with me, and it's been harder on him than me. Um, I don't know. I just, I just knew I could. And I, I don't know. I've been so fortunate, Mark, because so many people have, you know. I feel like they invested in us because they bought memberships the first year, and that's the only revenue stream we have. And we never advertise. We have yet to advertise for memberships because I feel like, God, I need more projects. But, I mean, there's so much more to the site. I mean, for especially the, the newbies out there, they effectively get a full-blown website for free if they do the free. We don't overbrand it with the cast voices. Um, they get, we have all these tools we're building in. We're only at our MVP, which is minimal viable product. You know, we're about to, well, we're in the funding phase to launch cast actors, our on camera piece, which the, the opportunities there are exponential. It's a wheelhouse for both of us, Nick and I, we already have casting agents endorsing and coming on as advisors. So the explosion in that market is much different than in the voiceover market where you are reaching out to a thousand producers, a thousand ad agencies and all of that trying to say, hey, yo, yo, over here, not only do we have the best in the business, and Mark, we do, 
on our site. You can also work directly with agents. It can be union, non-union. Oh, and it's free to post, and we keep your data for you forever. And you can create um, distribution lists or whatever you want to call them, rosters, and you can invite people. To, and, you know, we just made it feature, feature rich. Um, and, and, and it's when you get invited to an audition, and that we're different there. You know, we don't have a board. We don't have a search feature. I mean, seriously, how, when you search, how is it my system would determine the order of the receipts? Because we don't, you can't pay to be better. You know, you can just pay for more features. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was, I lost my mind. That's what I, that's why I did it. <laughs> well, one of the things that I was wondering, and I think you've partly just answered it, though, is what is Cast Voices value proposition? Because there are a lot of sites out there and, and they all claim that, you know, we're just connecting buyers and, and voices and that's what we want to do. And some of them do it in slightly different ways. You know, there's algorithms involved in some and there's just straight connections involved in others. And but everybody's trying to create something that's just a little bit different. Now, it sounds like a little bit of what you're doing is just in the features that you're offering, and that is a big part of your value proposition. Is that kind of what you were going for to differentiate yourself from all the rest of the players in the game? We took our point of view from that of the actor. We did not take a point of view from profitability. We did not take a point of view. Well, we did a, it's a B2B, so which B2B means business to business software as a service. Okay, so we're a B2B SaaS. And our two businesses mm -hmm. are casting and talent. And we took our main point of view from that at the talent. That's one, the talent we want to incent them, of course, to subscribe. But we also wanted, and I will say this over and over again, a fair playing field when it came to auditions, especially in the voiceover community, because it is a numbers and speed game. And, you know, if you if your casting director, let's just say you're on a different site, your casting director only wants to see 200 auditions and you can premium so that you get your auditions first. They're always going to go to everybody else first and they're going to fill up. And the chances of you being able to knock on that casting door with your audition just diminish exponentially over minutes. Ours is no different. We're the same, but we want you to all be invited at the same time so that you get an equal shot at it and it's very frustrating our side because we're transparent with that you know you get to see the audition quits receiving auditions once it's set by the casting director quote um so they can say they want to see 20 or they can say they want to see 2000 it's up to them we don't set that parameter we're a tool we're a tool um, but coming from the point of view of the actor we wanted you know at least some potential branding within our branding which side note no one this is not I don't care for our branding I didn't win that battle but I will the next time anyway so when um, um, from the actor's point of view if you're new or you just don't have the money you can still get at least a demo and um, a website presence you can get a custom URL you know we have features that give that stuff to you um, and we have more on our radar. I mean, like a rate calculator, uh, where and also when a casting director puts in their their product, it matches it against the rate and come back comes back and tells them, hey, that's not really a fair rate. Um, you know, training right now, Mark. I feel like we're training the the voiceover community to turn it read your specs, <laughs> name your files correct, all that other kind of stuff. And because we're transparent. You know, we get lots of questions and lots of grumps sometimes, but it's like we are really, in terms of receipt of those auditions, you know, we're like everybody else. It's set by casting. You touched on something that's really interesting, because when I was talking to some people in the community about, you know, are there questions that I should be asking Liz to, to get to know the site a little bit better? One of the things that came up was that people felt like there was crazy tight turnarounds on the jobs that were posted. Like by the time they got their audition notice... It was already too late. The job was already closed. But I think you've partly explained why that is, because if everybody's getting the jobs at the exact same time, there are going to be people who are present on the site, you know, throughout the day, whereas others might only pop in once or twice or, or pop in when a notice comes. Exactly. And if there's, you know, if a casting director is only asking for 25, for example, I mean, we all know from the way that 
voice actors work on casting sites, you can get 25 auditions in three minutes. Exactly. And so it sounds like it's not necessarily that there's tight turnaround on some of these projects as much as it is just this is a product of trying to keep it fair by sending it to everybody at the same time. Is that is that accurate? Yes, that is very, very accurate. Um, in that same vein, though, on the top of our uh, change requests that we're putting in, we're going to – let me back up. So the, our, our last casting director – or not last, but a casting director recently posted a project looking for 100 auditions. And he shared feedback with me that 53, Mark, 53 of those 100 auditions named their files wrong. So he deleted them without even giving them a listen. Of the 100 that – uh, submitted, 25% of them were people pitching. I mean, how it, you know, it's dumb for people pitching, hey, I don't match your project, but hey, check me out. What, what quicker way to get on somebody's bad side? Oh my gosh. Um, but what would, I, I could go on that forever. But so we're creating what's called a reserve folder. So the way the project works, casting director posts, casting director sets quota at 100, casting director gets 100. Project goes away. It doesn't get closed, so you don't show it up in the closed until casting director picks their talent. What we're going to create now is a reserve folder so that even if they've met their quota, all the other auditions go into this reserve folder and can be received by casting until the casting director closes the project. So everybody's work is not in total vain, and it's actually very beneficial. So, for example, that first 53 that got deleted, casting director then has the op option to say, hey, I'll take the next 53 that came in. Okay. And it's just a way of making sure it got there. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I, I can just go to being an entrepreneur. And, Mark, I think you asked me a question earlier, why now? I was born an entrepreneur. <laughs> I put on my first Broadway show at five. You know, I lost, I'm just, and it's not about the performance. It's really about just creating the product. Yep. And I, I can't stop. It's, it's been me all my life. And I would report that there are many thousands of voiceover talent that completely understand that statement because y'all are all entrepreneurs too. You know, yeah. you're stepping into probably the absolute most competitive field of any jobs there are anywhere, except for maybe on-camera actors. But you guys, at least on camera, all of the auditions go through some platform, all of them, which yeah. uh, and by casting. Whereas in the voiceover market, that's just a piece of your marketing pie, you know? Uh, so yeah. it's, it's real different. You've got, uh, you know, our estimates, well over a million people, not including India and uh, China, voiceover talent out there just kicking it every day, trying to do, take, not take your job, you take their job, trying to be the best at what they do so that they get hired. It's very competitive. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. It is not an easy industry. That's, that's absolutely no. certain. I appreciate the transparency because I think, you know, hearing you explain it the way you explained it for how jobs come in and get sorted and all that, I think that's going to answer some questions for talent, but it also brings up another point. And I remember interviewing Tanya Buchanan from Tada Voiceworks a couple of months ago on the podcast, and one of her biggest frustrations was talent's inability to follow basic directions. And I have done a little bit of casting as a as a voice actor. You know, clients ask me for something and I'm not the right fit, so I, you know, will put out a casting. And it's always been my number one issue, too, is I will give, like, three very clear, very basic sets of direction that I need you to follow. You know, this is a male project. Can I get <laughs> yeah. females submitting? Or, know. you know, this is a commercial project and people are sending me their e-learning demo or things of that nature. So it's, I can't believe this actually goes on on the casting sites as well. So there's a lot of talent that are really trying really hard while simultaneously completely working against themselves and their potential for success just by not following the basic stinking directions. Exactly. It's so, so true. Now, one of the things that's on our plate is, so the way, when the project owner sets up the project, they set up a project and then they set up roles, okay? So there's two different fields, if you will, fields of information. And so the roles are broken out by whatever roles they're looking for. So when you audition, or you're invited to audition for whatever roles, one or however many, 
when you click into that project, you're in it, if that makes sense. So when you upload your audition, okay. it's going specifically to that role. And so one of our features we're trying to do is to auto name the file for you. And then you're at least going to get in. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though. I feel like that's just one more thing to give voice actors an excuse to be lazy and not pay attention to the directions. Like I know. I mean, well, you said 53 out of 100. Yes. yes. Is, is that was is that correct? You said 53 yeah. out of 100 mislabeled the yes. files on that one yes. job. Yes. That's in, like that just blows my mind. It's absolutely insane. Well, listen, while that's a mistake and dumb, you know, it's like, come on, take time. The one that bothers me more, honestly, Mark, are the people that are taking slots. And this is why they sometimes fill up so fast. Taking slots by pitching themselves to the casting director. I, I just think that is so disrespectful to the casting director's time and to the people on these platforms who are, you know, doing it right. Because that is not the time to pitch to a casting director. Not once, not never, not ever. They're in the middle of their job. It's like you in the middle of a session, me knocking on the door. Mark, Mark, I'm here. Hey, not pretty. You know, it's, it's just how ridiculous is that? Anyway, I'm passionate about it. Um, well, my concern with that would be that it would actually work against the voice actor's potential on the site going forward. Because if you get a yes. bunch of buyers, casting directors, whatever, coming to the site – and they're consistently getting voice actors who don't follow directions or who are submitting when they shouldn't submit, they're going to lose faith in the site. Well, and, and, and let me tell you two features that we have, and I'm not trying to pump the features, but that just reminded me. So one of the, the features is that the casting director, one, if someone's pro, they can actually offer feedback to that person, real time, real words right there. But... There's also going to be an internal mm -hmm. rating system. And it's really more geared at working with a client that posted on the site and then they were forever pay. They didn't pay or whatever. You can the talent can say, hey, they're scumbags. And you know, get enough scumbags and we boot that person or that hirer from the site. Sure. Okay. But the other thing that we are going to do, which I I really, really like well, one, and the demos is just ridiculous. The, the same thing can happen. Those people can be blocked from the casting director on an open audition they can block them so they won't even get it because i can't follow the rules yep um but the other thing my my favorite feature that's not implemented yet but it will be is it's actually a philanthropic feature and it's where folks like you can let's just say you set a rate of twenty dollars just stay with me here okay. but it's it's philanthropic dollars so what happens is an actor comes on the site and says, hey, I would like for Mark Scott to review and give me feedback. And I'm putting $20 in the charity fund. Mark Scott then doesn't get the $20, but he designates what charity that goes to. I love that. And in return, gives the guy feedback. And I mean, you don't have to play, you know, but you're not going to get paid for it. But you are, because at the end of the year, for all those that you did, you get the tax forms that you need. It doesn't go to the actor who paid the money. It goes to you because you designated the money and your time. That's brilliant. I love that feature. Thank you. I think so, too. I'm really pleased with it because, I mean, it's not implemented yet, but I just feel uh, like, I, I mean, if you know me, I am <laughs> I'm a giver. You know, I don't get paid to go to conferences. Um, there's been a couple times where people have paid me for being their guests, but it's just really rare. I mean, I should, but I'm really big on um, just giving back. You know, mm -hmm. I just think we're humans and we should just do that. And But anyway, so I really like this feature and um, I think it's going to really encourage both sides of that coin to work together in a way that's mutually beneficial. Well, I think it's a really smart way to, because I mean, obviously one of the biggest frustrations from the voice actor standpoint is we submit all these auditions on all of these casting sites and then we never know, right? We never hear, unless we book the job, right? we really never know. Was our audition good? Was it bad? Were we, were we, you know, were we hitting the mark? Did we, were we a mile away from the mark or whatever? And so I really like the idea of building in some sort of incentivized system for that, that gives the talent an opportunity to get a little bit of feedback potentially while doing something great and charitable at the same time. I, that's 
one of the smartest features I think I've ever heard on a casting set. I, I love that so much. Oh, thank you. Well, it's 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 on our we call it the TV our TV of things to get done um, because we had to get the site out first and you know right now we're we're paying our bills which is great but nobody's taking any kind of salary or anything because we just you know we're still feel like we're in the throes of being fair to both sides of that B two B you know for talent I mean. Yep. I feel like they're investing in me as an entrepreneur and that, that honors my heart. Um, but I also feel like we really need to give uh, value for their dollars, whether it's 150 or 250 a year. I mean, like I said, we really try to be future rich, but until we, people still look at us as a casting, online casting. So I feel like we need to really just bring a lot more projects over. Um, we have a great tool. Um, you know, just, I think launching during a pandemic was just the smartest idea ever. Um, and you would think in voiceover, it would have, <laughs> it would, it would have made a difference because voiceover just went crazy, but everybody was kind of stuck in their ways and, you know, doing what they were used to doing because the rest of the world around them was in utter chaos. So don't give me anything else new to do. And I think that's just not true for our side. I think it's true for everybody. Mm -hmm. These last couple of years have been hard on people as a whole because so much chaos is going on. And in the midst of this, you're trying to get more customers. You're trying to get more traction. You're trying to get more this and that. And the receiving end of that is just as overwhelmed as you are. Yeah. So now that we're beginning to come out of the mayhem, I mean, it's still there. People are still at risk, you know, but life is beginning to move on. You know, I think we probably have six or eight more months of just kind of like this. I'm, I'm, my head's above water. <laughs> I'm treading. And I don't just mean voice actors. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody is humans. So now we're like, yep. ah, ah, there's the mud in the bottom of the lake. Okay, I'm sinking a little bit, sink, but I'm, I'm not struggling. And eventually they're going to stop to step out of the water back into their selves. And I just, you know, all the griping in the world isn't going to make people move faster, learn faster, do faster, anything. It's just a matter of mental health and and, and learning then how to navigate new journeys. Yeah. So, look, I got to ask the tough question. Please do. I've spoken with a number of voice actors who are on the site who are disappointed with the lack of jobs that are there. Obviously, the site's still relatively new. You're still trying to, to build up. It's hard to compete. Like some of these other casting sites, and I'm not going to name names, but some of them, they're literally spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on Google ads and, and things of that nature to, to make sure that they're ranking number one for every possible search. And there's probably some of these sites are probably using keywords tied to cast voices to rank number one on search results that might be for yours. So what do you say to the talent who's invested the money? And, and I mean, there is an element of investing in a startup and getting something going and creating a different alternative. But at the end of the day, these voice actors are looking for work. What do you say to the talent about the fact that there's been a lack of jobs right now? I'm sorry. I truly am. I, it is not for not trying. We are out there every single day reaching out to people to please use our site. We are trying every, you know, we have spent hours in training trying to figure out how to navigate social media in the ways that work. Um, I think we're on point with what we're doing. Um, for everyone that's paid, we've given them extra months you know so to so as i mean some of them have gotten like up to you two years for the price of one just depends on when they came on um we're trying to be fair across the board um okay you know the best i can tell you mark is that we are every single day reaching out to many many people you know and you can try it with something like constant contact or mailchimp or pfft, that doesn't work it, I mean, it might. You, I mean, we do have about, a, it's like 150, I think, casting directors on the site now, which I think is remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not, you know, they're not posting a project every day, right. which is the State of the Union. Um, 
talent don't see all the projects. So I think they feel like there's nothing going on when there is because the projects are, you're only invited if you match the specs. So that's the other key feature. We're much, much like a voice bank. Um, there is still, with the casting community, there is still a level of trust that's missing with us because they see sites, casting sites as the enemy, and I get it. Yep. But ours was set up to be a tool. You know, we're not, we don't charge to use the site. We will help you. We will post it for you. And I mean, it comes from you. It never comes from us. So we will, I mean, I'm expert in this stuff. I can help you cast every day and I don't charge for it. I want my talent, the 5,000, 4,000, it's 4,000 and some change people that are members, most of them free. I want them to feel like, we're in their court, that we are there mm -hmm. trying to help them work. But to answer the people that are frustrated, I get it. I wish I had a good answer for you. I wish I could. It has been the hardest challenge ever in my career. And I'm, but I'm not, I'm not giving up, still working at it every single day. And, you know, Jen Greenfield is helping. Elizabeth Alcott is helping. Bobby Alcott is helping. Nick Rousey is helping. You know, we're out there every day. It's, I just am, you know, I can't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing. Yep. You know, we're doing good to cover our expenses because like I said, we're not trying to bring new members on, you know, how touched am I totally in my soul that by word of mouth, we are where we are because that's a testament to me and my tribe. For sure. And I cannot, I mean, I'll get all teary eye about it, but I cannot tell you how much I'm honored. And I also cannot tell you how absolutely gut wrenching it is to me. Huh. And I'm letting people down. It's a, it's such a tough thing. And you know what? I think part of it, and I want to just tell you that I have so much respect for your transparency and, and, I hope you understand, you know, I'm just asking the question, but I, I have so much respect for your transparency. Oh, of course. And I believe in what you're trying to accomplish. I think a lot of voice actors feel there, there was a, a couple of years ago, there was, a, and I'm not going to name names, but there was a relatively high profile new casting site that came onto the scene. And, you know, the, the owner of the casting site attended a bunch of conferences and said all the right things and made so many great promises. And, I'm and well aware. you know, everybody was hyped up for it and ready to go. And then the whole thing just crashed and burned so quickly and he disappeared and nothing was ever said again. And I think voice actors were feeling a little bit kind of burned and violated by it. And I think that has left us a little bit leery of some yes. new sites coming in. So I just want to say that I appreciate the fact that you're just telling it like it is. You're you're still you're sitting here, you're answering the questions, you're you're giving us transparency. I know that it bothers you that that this is the way things are going. I mean, I can I can very clearly feel that, but I also know that you're working hard to try to make it happen, right? To try to get things going. It sounds to me like there's an oh, yeah. an education element, maybe on the casting director side, to get yes. them to understand the, the the value proposition that you offer over other sites. And then, I mean, how do you compete against, you know, multi hundreds of thousands of dollar budgets that some of these other sites are throwing out there to try and bring in all the work. And the thing that's a real piss off is some of these sites that are spending the most money, they're actually the worst sites that are out there. I know, I, I know. And you know, mad props to a couple of them out there because it's not easy starting a software company. It's quite difficult, honestly. Yep. And all of our code is, is, is custom, you know, and uh, so mad props to everybody out there trying to do it. Um, the, be I, you know, I know, I know that the competition is daunting. I do feel like truthfully, if I can get the funding and get the cast actors side of things, rocking and rolling, just to give you an example, there's a million voice actors. There's 83 million people in cast and crew and production. Okay. Just as a reference point. Jeez. Uh -huh. And, uh, everything in, in that world now is online casting and everybody that's doing that kind of work now, you know, I've already got like was endorsements from casting directors that to bring ours on once we're on, cause we're just new and state of the art and all that kind of groovy two shoes stuff that transposes over to the voiceover community as well, because that on camera world also does voiceover, but then we become more word of mouth 
yep. more penetrated into the, the entertainment community. Mm-hmm. And that transitions to a whole lot of just co-op stuff that I think will make cast voices much more robust. Plus, with funding, we can go put into cast voices what we had always planned to do. One thing we ha- are doing that I do think will make a difference, our landing page sucks. <laughs> End of discussion. <laughs> so we um, have, <laughs> we've created a new landing page that's much more informative. And it takes you and it trains you and it's interactive. Um, it's just been slow because, you know, like I said, <laughs> We got to work, work in the middle of the night right now. So um, I think that's going to make a difference. Yeah. And we're also going to tie that to a great big marketing campaign, but it'll be direct marketing. I mean, I do know a lot of people, I just, you know, a lot of casting, like I said, so I feel better or stronger in the on camera place. But on our side, the reason so many hundreds of thousands and more millions or whatever of dollars that are spent in advertising it's really, really to seek out more actors because that's where the money comes in. Yeah. You know, you get more actors on there, uh, more voice actors, you know, mm. and people think of it as the answer. Um, it just changes the world. Yep. Sorry, I, my phone rang in the middle of that. So we, we know there's no algorithms. In ours, we do have algorithms. Oh, you do? Okay, but there's no algorithms for, like... There's another site that uses an algorithm that you basically get punished if you don't use the algorithm correctly. So we're not, we're not, no. you're, you're not using that no. sort of technique or technology on your site, right? No. no. And, and there's, there's no way for talent to purchase priority or anything like that. So, I mean, a big part of your, your proposition is you're just making a level playing field, right? You're as much as humanly possible. You are working to just make a level playing field for voice actors, right? That's, that's the way it is. Yes. And I think that's important for people to understand because that is part of the value proposition yes. that you offer. I mean, you've yes. got tons of features and you've outlined a bunch of those features already. You know, you've talked about the things that you're oh, building on the, on the casting director side. And you've talked, I love the idea of this charitable thing to the, uh, the philanthropic option to get feedback, which is, you know, a feature that's in the works. What else is coming? Is there anything else coming for cast voices that you guys have in the works for, you know, later in the year or whatever that, that you're working on, anything that you can give us a sneak preview on? Well, the, the two things that are priority right now is our new landing page because it just, it's really project centric. Mm -hmm. So it's really trying to drive home to project owners, what we've got for them. We call them project owners because casting can come from a casting director, producer, director, you know, you, everybody. So project owners. Um, so that is at the top of our list. And the, uh, the other thing I already talked about, which is the um, overflow field for auditions. So those two things are the, the, the newest things that will go across. Um, Except, except for any kind of things Nick is doing in the back that I just don't know about, you know, and that that's geek talk whenever he's doing stuff. It's like, oh, look, we got it to do this faster. Or look, isn't this cool how this migrates over here, you know. All the stuff that geek nobody talk. really understands, <laughs> but, but you just know that it makes the site better. You just nod and say, well done, <laughs> you know, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a long, long time ago, before COVID, before, you know, all of the stuff that we've gone through in the last two years when we could freely roam the earth and, and spend time with people and hang out and have fun and, and join together in harmony, you were working on something called Camp VO. And and I know that Camp VO got squashed because of COVID, which I was very disappointed about because I thought that it sounded like it was going to be a ton of fun. So I've got to oh ask, is that something that may still be on the radar if things start to free up a little bit? Yes. Yes. Because, oh, my God, was that ever going to be fun? I mean, we had yeah. like six to eight people to a cabin. We had these amazing grounds, amazing food. We, it was pretty cheap because, you know, I think it was like eight hundred something dollars and it included everything, your food, your beverage, everything. And we had some of the best speakers. Oh, my gosh. Um, to be honest, yes, Mark, we will someday bring that back. But right now, um, even though I did attend One Voice USA this past weekend and had the time of my life, I still am a little leery putting people 
together. It's this beast is still out there. I understand. You know, and my yep. efforts right now are just so tied to what we're trying to do over there on CV that I, it's not currently in stone anywhere. But yeah, we, we're not, we're, that was going to be too much fun. And the other thing I'm going to do is I have a trailer you can pull behind a truck, you know, a little 12 footer, and I'm having it converted into um, a tailgating bar. <laughs> and I'm going to take it to uh, uh, parks you know, national parks and have okay. cast voices, outdoor parties. Okay. Where you just come if you want to, you know, just to hang out. Remember when they launched Saturn, you may be too young, but when they launched Saturn, they started having all these Saturn meetup groups and just people who drove Saturns would say, Hey, we're going to be at XYZ address, meet us. And I kind of want to do that with the traveling, the traveling cast voices trailer. Well, that sounds kind of fun, and I'm I'm glad to hear that the Camp Vo Dream is is still alive because it it really did sound like it was going to be a fun event. Thank you, and I hope you'll do it again, even though we didn't, or you will. You know what I mean. I will. Yes, you're awesome. So, from starting tag to starting cast voices, you you've said you you were an entrepreneur. You did your first show when you were five years old, and you've already acknowledged in the interview that voice actors are in fact entrepreneurs, that this is an entrepreneurial venture that we're doing. So what is the best piece of entrepreneurial advice that you have to offer to a voice actor based on your experience and your years in the industry? I think you need to remember that you are your own CEO. You are actually running a company mm -hmm. and your decisions should be in the best interest of your company, not a post you read, <laughs> not a feeling of inadequacy, not an imposter syndrome. You got to get through all of that stuff mm -hmm. because you are a talented human being and you are making decisions for you. Learn from the best, but, and take note, your gut will tell you what's right and wrong. Pay attention. Your intuition is this wonderful gestalt, I think is the right word, but anyway, this wonderful feeling about what is right. And do it from the perspective of you are trying to run a kick-ass business. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> love it. I think it's so important. I love collecting advice from from people like you who have been there and done that and understand. And and so many voice actors don't see themselves that way. We tend to, you know, people in the industry tend to be creative types, more of just get me in the booth and let me perform. And And the business side of things, the entrepreneurial side of things doesn't always come natural. So it's always good to to hear from people who have good advice to offer to help us to get to see things a little bit differently. So the website is castvoices.com. Are you currently accepting new applications or not at this time? Oh, people can always join. I encourage you just to get a free profile, you know? Okay. I mean, I, I, if you want to invest, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. But you can create okay. a free profile. You can get on there and feel it. Mark, I just want to throw in, I really like what you do for the community. I really like what you do. Well, thank you. Come you. from just such a great perspective. And uh, you have this, I, I, I watch you with your family and your barbecuing and all that good stuff. You're human too, but you're a smart dude. Well, I don't know how I feel about somebody from Texas watching me barbecue. <laughs> I, I don't know that I measure up there. Well, I'm not, I didn't offer my opinion. I just said I, I watched <laughs> You just you just respect the fact that I do it because you're from Texas and you know it's like religion down there. It is. That's honestly, I mean, was I excited about going to One Voice if it, if it could have worked out for me? Yes, I was excited to go to the conference, but really what I was excited about is if it would have worked out, I was excited about Texas barbecue. Oh, yeah. Like I, every night I was going to be at a different barbecue joint, like, you know, conference would have been great. <laughs> I was super excited to go and 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 speak and hang out with people and whatever, but I just wanted to come to Texas for the barbecue. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Are you going to be at One Voice? Not One Voice, I'm sorry. VO North. Isn't that in Toronto? I, I am going to be at VO North. And that's actually going to be my first in-person conference that I've done since, I guess, <gasps> since WovoCon in 2019. So I'm uh, I'm very much looking forward to finally getting to get back together with some people and hang out and, and be in person Well, then I'll again. hug your neck. There you I'm go. I'll be there too. Whoop, Perfect. Whoop. Well, Maybe Liz, I'll bring you some barbecue. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
can manage that a bit. Liz, I just I just want to say thank you for for the time. I I know that uh, you, you you said after forty five minutes I was going to start cooking because I made you turn the air conditioning off. So we're, we're just about <laughs> there. I I don't want to make you start cooking. But I, I want to say thank you for your time, and I am so grateful for your transparency. I mean, you answered the tough questions. You gave honest answers. You're not making promises that you know you can't keep. You're just telling people straight, like it is, what it is. And I think for any voice actor that believes in what you're trying to create and understands deeper what you're trying to create, which I think after this, we all have a better understanding of what it is that you're trying to create. You know, my hope is that the community is going to be understanding and that we're going to continue to support you because I do think that there's... I do think there's potential in what you're doing, and I think it is different, and it and it does offer a value proposition that other casting sites don't. And man, I just really want to see it succeed. So thank you for your time, for your transparency, for your honesty, and for your commitment and dedication to the industry. I'm I'm grateful for that too. My goodness, I'm blushing, and you are so terrific. What a great human you are. Thank you for the making my heart smile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Liz has a lot to offer when it comes to cast voices, and I hope that you have a better understanding of the site. Are there challenges right now? Yes. Is it the site that's going to give you the biggest return on your investment right now? Maybe not. Does that mean that it's a bad site? Absolutely not. I think that it is definitely one to keep an eye on because I do think that the site is going to continue to grow, and I do believe in what Liz is trying to accomplish. Also, hey, if you can get a free profile anywhere, why not set up a free profile? It's one more place on the internet where you are able to put yourself. It is one more place on the internet where you are able to get your demos out there and get them heard. And so I think for that reason alone, it is absolutely worth taking advantage of. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you enjoy this interview? Did you learn something about cast voices? I'd love to know that you were listening. Please tag us in your Instagram stories. Let us know that you are listening to the podcast. You can tag cast voices. It's at cast voices. And you can tag at Mark Scott. And I'd love to see that you are listening, that you are learning, and that you are enjoying. I hope that you are learning a lot from the online casting site series, which will continue next episode. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday VOpreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash markscott. And scene. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more VOPreneur goodness? Jump online at VOPreneur.com.